I think we'll see some better restaurants. Um, I think we'll see more restaurants. We now have a great chef in the neighborhood in the name of, by the name of Bingo Starr, who's over at the Marini Bistro. Uh, I'm the executive chef of uh, this restaurant, Marini Brasserie. Uh, I took it over in January. Uh, has since with Emerald Lagasse, Windsor Court, Cuvée opened in town. But uh, moved over here to the, the, the Marini and just having fun all the time. Did you choose to come to the Marini because of the Marini? You came here for the opportunity at, um, at the Marini Brasserie? Uh, well, I was approached by the owners. Uh, I had left uh, La Cote Brasserie and uh, I was approached by them to take over the restaurant. And uh, I was working at a hotel. I wanted to get back to a smaller restaurant and uh, really had never spent a whole lot of time in this neighborhood. I mean, lived here all my life, but I mean, I've fallen in love with it since I've been down here. You know, I'm ready to move down here. and. Yeah, it's just every day you don't know what you're going to see walking by your window or what somebody's going to be wearing or what somebody's going to be doing. <laughs> you know, there's the French Quarter, which is crazy, and it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of tourists and that kind of stuff. We're over here, it's a little more neighborhood, you know, definitely a neighborhood feel. I mean, the same characters walking by every day. Uh, you know, most of our business is locals, you know, people live in the neighborhood or it's all the bed and breakfast owners that send a lot of people there. So it's, it's a lot more family or neighborhood feel to it than like the French Quarter, or like I've had restaurants in the Central Business District, you know, and Saturday afternoon it's a ghost town where it's busy right now all the time. The housing market here has been booming the last several years. Um, you see people uh, who actually bought houses on this very block just a few years ago, um, selling them for a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars more than they bought them for today. Uh, just amazing increase in property values. And we haven't seen a lot of changes in terms of the feel of the neighborhood from that yet. Um, but as the property turns over at those much higher prices, we're going to see changes, there's no question. Um, this end of the Marini has always been more gentrified. It's the part that started being gentrified first. It's closest to the quarter. And um, in many ways, the gentrification here is almost consolidated. There are still little bits and pieces that aren't gentrified yet. But it's um, much farther along than the rest of the neighborhood, the rectangle. And you see uh, more and more conflicts here between the property owners who um, really see it as a showpiece historic district and the people who come here um, or have been here who see it really is a bohemian neighborhood. Just, just this phone call right here in front of my house is, is a site of constant conflict for the neighborhood. Uh, people put up flyers for uh, their lost animals and, and yard sales and for um, bands, for shows, and there are a few homeowners around here who come by once a day and rip down all the flyers uh, because they say it junks up the neighborhood. I think the little corners of flyers left on the pole is far more ugly than the flyers. Um, but um, that battle gets played out every day right there on that phone pole between whether you should have such things as banned flyers in public or not. So there's, there definitely is conflict um, here in the neighborhood uh, between um, a more bohemian environment and, and the, uh, the folks who really do see it as, as a historic preservation show place. I don't see why it can't be both. And the real hot button issue was about the ARC, a uh, community space over in the rectangle. And the ARC did all sorts of things, shows, it has a collective bookstore in it, a computer lab that kids in the neighborhood and around the neighborhood can come use. A lot of really wonderful things that serve the Marini community and the broader community. Almost all of it volunteer, uh, collective based, really, really wonderful effort. And the feeling on the board, again, that I disagreed with was that these sorts of social services, as they would call it, did not belong in a residential neighborhood. And there's been a lot of effort to try to shut the art down.
if um, Marini was alive today, what would he think about his um, suburb? I think he would be very pleased. Um, certainly there, there are buildings here that he couldn't have imagined in his lifetime, but of course there are many still here that were built during his lifetime. He didn't die until like uh, 1868. I think he would be very pleased. I mean, it's, it's obviously a bustling neighborhood and, and that was what he wanted. He wanted it to be a popular and attractive place. Bye tomorrow. See you later. Yeah, I'll find more about tomorrow.